Yesterday's air attack had the effect that now everybody understood why it was so important that we remain below the surface during the day. Everybody on board was shocked by how suddenly the airplane managed to appear, dive down on us and drop a bomb. We are very fortunate that the bomb missed us by a dozen meters or so and nothing was damaged. Yes, it is very uncomfortable to stay submerged so long. The air gets stale and very bad, hard to breathe even. But it is our best chance to survive this madness. We have reloaded our torpedo tubes again. The three torpedoes that we have in our tubes now are all that remains to us. Once again I wish that we were in a bigger boat. The storm is still raging, but we have to endure it during the night so that we can recharge our batteries on the surface. We have been searching the area for some time now, without finding anything. Until now, a ship has been spotted in the darkness. close the distance to the ship until we can identify that it is a freighter. But to our great misfortune it is flying a Norwegian flag. In this weather I am not sending any one of my crew over to the ship to inspect it. We will just have to let it go. Later that same night, the watch crew reports another ship in the darkness. The storm is still raging, but our batteries are almost recharged. Will this be another new tool ship? Or a British one that we can finally engage? We will close the distance and find out. Hello there, and welcome to the continuation of our Silent Hunter 3 GWX campaign. We are playing with the One Alex Edition mod compilation, and we have just found the target. There is a ship out there in the darkness, so we will Jawohl, go ahead and intercept. Neuer Kurs zwei zwei sechs. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy, große Fahrt voraus. Let's set up everything for action. Let's see. Uh, the engine crew. Let's reinforce those guys. Make sure that the engines are running well. We'll bring you guys in so that the bridge is fully manned. Spotting guys up there, they are fine. Everybody's alright, okay. Turn has been completed and the ship is out there. Now, I don't know what YouTube will be doing to this video. So I hope that you can still see enough. It will get lighter. We have, um, I think we have sunrise at 6.30 maybe. So it should get lighter pretty soon. We are just off the English coast here. In our patrol area. I still don't know what kind of ship that is in front of me. But we will move in and investigate. Let me let me actually come to starboard. I want to get ahead of him. Push those engines. Give me a weather report. Uh, 15 meters per second wind. Yeah, that's what I figured. The weather is absolutely terrible. I'm not even sure if we will be able to perform an attack. If the target's draft is too shallow, we might not be able to fire a torpedo at him. Without basically guaranteeing a torpedo failure. If we come to this periscope, 15 meters per second, we need to set a torpedo to at least 6 meters in depth. Better would be 9. That will be difficult. 
no, six meters is the minimum that we should set the torpedo to. But the target should have a draft of at least nine meters. Uh, that comes from the torpedo setting procedures for this point in the war. Basically, due to the depth keeping problem of the torpedoes, we have to set the depth to the target's draft minus two meters. That means we have to use a minimum depth of three meters and a minimum depth of four meters in heavy seas. Here we have to use at least six meters, I think. And still we might risk torpedo failure. I still can't tell what kind of ship that is. It is a bit too dark for that. Just the... Uh, oh, damn it, these waves. Just the column of smoke rising from his smokestack is very distinctive. I hope it's not a warship. No, no that is a freighter. That looks like a freighter. Is it an armed freighter though? I can't tell. We are not yet in a position where we could tell. Oh my god, look at these waves. The boat is being rocked from left to right. If you get easily seasick, I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. I know that a lot of people get nauseous when they even see something like this. They don't even have to be on a boat. I can't tell what it is. The waves are too violent and the night is too dark. Do we have a moon out somewhere? No. So it doesn't matter from which direction we attack, which is good. My diesels are being starved of oxygen because the waves are too high. That is slowing us down. We are not recharging batteries anymore. Yes, we are. I thought we were ready. Okay. Get the standard propulsion. I thought the batteries were charged. Oh well, maybe not yet. I'm debating whether I should drive the boat a bit faster. Okay. I think I'll cut the video here and I'll resume once we can say a bit more about our target. Welcome back! Uh, we were closer to that ship than I realized, and we just crossed his course. So, I think we crossed his course when we had him at a bearing of 265. So, let's have a quick look here. 265. It's over here. So his course oh. So his course is three hundred and forty four. Okay. Let's start to come to a parallel course. I don't want to be spotted by him, so I have to narrow my profile a bit.
let's do some things to determine where exactly he is. We have him on 171, range 1000. 171, that's down this way. At about a thousand. That's fine. Okay. And we did say he is going on a course of three four four. So We'll project his course like this. We are how far away from his track? Only 400 meters. That's not a lot. Come left. Increase the range. Oh my god. My god, these waves. Seriously. Let's decrease our speed a little bit. Now we already have his course. That gives us the AOB for our firing solution. The range won't matter because I will do another 90 degree attack. But what kind of ship is that? And that is the draft deep enough? might just be a bit deep enough, but I can't... No, it is a red flag, definitely. I can't tell it exactly, though. I'm not super sure about this. Okay, here's what we'll do now. Turn the boat to 344. Slow speed ahead. Are we there? Come on, turn the boat. So last time I showed you how to get the target speed by basically adjusting your own speed to his when you're running parallel. But there's another method that you can do which is uh, a bit quicker. So right now I'm on a parallel course, coming to my map, and give me a bearing to target. 145, which is... Where? 145, this way. So we know that right now he is here. And I should have started the stopwatch immediately. Yeah, let's do that again. I messed that up a bit. Um, move the watch out of the way. There we go. Let's try that again. Parallel course, everything's alright. Give me a bearing to target. 142. Right now. I have to hurry up, otherwise I'm losing accuracy. And stopwatch. Let's place a marker. And now we will time 3 minutes and 15 seconds. And then we will take another bearing. And then we will know exactly how fast he's going. He's over there. Still can't tell what exactly he is. The good thing with this method is that we are independent from... Um, his speed. We can go faster than him, we can go slower than him. It doesn't really matter. That is an English flag. This is an English ship. 
he has a weapons platform in the back. Or does he? There is something, definitely. Are we gaining on this guy? Or is he gaining on us? Who is faster right now? I would say he is. Oh yeah, definitely. He is going faster. Increase our speed. We don't want him to get too close. It's not a big ship. I'm not sure about the draft. I still... I'm not sure about that, if I can even fire a torpedo. Okay. One more minute until we take our next bearing. Is he still gaining on us, or have we sped up enough? I think we are keeping our distance to him more or less the same. Which is... precisely what I want. Okay. He has a weapons platform on the back, but I don't see if he's armed or not. I can't see that right now. Slow down the boat. And prepare to take another measurement. Right... Now. At bearing 133. One, two, three, thereabouts. Okay, so here... So he was here when we took the first bearing, and right now he was here when we took the second. Now we will simply measure the distance that he traveled. And he traveled... 760 60 meters, more or less. Now, we measured a time of 3 minutes and 15. Why did we do that? The reason for that was that this already gives us the speed in knots right now. The distance, we don't have to convert anything anymore. The 760 meters that he traveled in 3 minutes and 15 mean that he is traveling at a speed of 7.5 knots. That's how that works. So... That's great, we can prepare everything and we can engage him. Bring the user to the bridge. Now, let me set this up. We will shoot at his left bow, 90 degrees. He is going at the speed of 7.5 knots. Range to target will be more or less 500 meters, that's fine. I will shoot one torpedo, I think. Let me see, I do have a steam power torpedo in tube number two. It is night time, so that could be a good thing to use here. Or I sh Yeah, I'm shooting the steam torpedo. Uh, select tube number two. Set depth six meters, impact pistol. Medium speed. Verify settings. Everything is fine. That's pretty good. Okay, then. Come right 90 degrees. Let's do this. Increase the turn speed. No, actually don't. He's pretty 
close. Stay slow. Let's stay slow for now. Surface attack, you don't have that every day. Still turning the boat. I hope I'm turning in time. Open the tube. Yeah, I think I'm turning just in time. Scope is on bearing. Tube is open. Everything is set. Turn is completed right now. And now we wait for him to pass through the crosshairs. Which might not be too easy in these waves, to be honest. I might actually... Oh, there, there he comes. Okay. Prepare to fire. Let's hope this torpedo doesn't run deep. I will aim just in front of the bridge, I think. Torpedo... Go! Torpedo is in the water and is running towards the target. Uh, full turn. Let's get away from him. Do we get a hit? Do we get a hit? Come on. Come on, Torpedo, don't fail me. The Torpedo failed. Yeah, that's a torpedo failure. Damn it. He did not spot us yet, but that torpedo unfortunately failed. I have two more. Do I shoot them at him though? Increase our speed. Let's come around and we'll try again. Damn weather. Damn torpedoes. Or do I break off the engagement here? He might just be too shallow. His draft, I mean. This draft might be a bit too shallow. It's not a big ship, it's very possible that his draft is just too shallow for this. Hmm. Just by looking at this ship. Now I have the feeling that we should break off the engagement. We tried, but it's not going to work in this weather. Not with our torpedoes, at least. Yeah. I think I am breaking this off. Navigator return us to course. Gehen wieder auf course, Herr Kaloyn. Practical terms, that means we are turning away. The 
So, another torpedo failure. Another ship getting away. They don't even know how lucky they are. They didn't spot me, they didn't spot the torpedo. Let's leave the area. We are getting out of here. We are just getting out of here. But at least I hope that the um, that today's episode was good enough to illustrate a simple method to get the target's speed. Another simple method. I don't know if you can tell, but um, each time I'm doing something that is a bit more advanced than the previous time. So... At the end of this campaign, if we survive long enough, you will know quite a lot about how to find a good targeting solution. Uh, let's summarize how this method works. So in essence, you first get ahead of the target, so that you have his course. Then you can immediately draw his position on the map. I mean, if you are directly ahead of him, that's a good moment to do that. Just note down a bearing towards him and then you have his course and everything. You can then draw his path on the map. Then you come out to, I don't know, 1000, 2000 meters, something like that. You run parallel with him. You take a bearing reading, you mark where he is at that moment exactly, because remember, you have his position and his course, so you do know which way he's going. You time 3 minutes and 15, and then you take another bearing. And if you measure the distance between these two positions of his, you will have his exact speed. So, pretty simple method, very effective as long as the target holds a true course and doesn't zigzag or anything like that. With our target escaping behind us, this will be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. This time nothing exploded, but that's just how this war will go, especially in the early war. Our torpedoes are terrible, unfortunately. Let me know in the comments if you like this episode or if you have any questions. I really do appreciate every single comment and I try to read them all and to reply to them. Until next time, have some great days and goodbye.